I'm Phil Gale. Welcome to the programme. The separatist leader of the Nagorno-Karabakh territory inside Azerbaijan has declared that the territory will cease to exist by the beginning of next year. And this comes after Azerbaijan arrested his predecessor, Armenian-Russian billionaire Aruban Vardanyan, who was brought to the Azeri capital, Baku, after being taken into custody on the road to Armenia. Now, this comes as Armenian authorities say more than half the population of Nagorno-Karabakh has fled since Azerbaijan took control last week. The Prime Minister's office says more than 65,000 people have now arrived in Armenia from the breakaway region. DW's uh, Maria Katamatsa is at the Armenian border with Azerbaijan, where she met some of the people seeking safety. Streams of cars continue to arrive at the Armenian border. Some of them have been waiting in line for days to reach safety. Azerbaijan's military takeover of the breakaway region of Nagorno-Karabakh last week prompted thousands of ethnic Armenians to leave their homes and their lives behind them. Margarita Sakyan is one of them. She and her family of 12 fled their village as soon as they heard the sounds of missiles nearby. They've taken refuge in this hotel in the Armenian border town of Goris. It has become a makeshift shelter. It happened all of a sudden. Nobody expected it. We were bombed at night. We didn't know where to go. We thought we'd run to the forest to wait until the situation calmed down. But we were told that we had to escape. I ran without taking anything, just my family. Margarita and her family suffered during a nine-month-long blockade imposed by the Azerbaijani government last December. The enclave was cut off from the outside world. There were critical shortages of food, water and medicine. We had no flour. No sugar, no food. I had no milk for my grandkids. Nothing. How can one live like that? Most of the refugees found shelter here in Goris, just 30 kilometers away from their homeland. Azerbaijan has promised to guarantee the safety of ethnic Armenians. However, Margarita says they had no choice but to leave, possibly forever. Our journalist Neil Hauer joins us from the Armenian town of Kornidso, near the border with Azerbaijan. Welcome back, Neil. Um, can we start with this statement uh, from uh, Nagorno-Karabakh that it will cease to exist by next year? What does this mean? I mean, it formalizes what was all essentially already happening. You know, the, the, with the surrender of the, the government and the, 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 the decision to disband, accept Azerbaijan's terms to disband the army last week on Wednesday uh, after the 24 hours of uh, Azerbaijani offensive. Uh, this was, you know, something that was a formality. And it, it's, a, it, it's, it's also a formality that uh, that will only be disbanded on January 1st because, you know, in, effectively the state will cease to exist probably in a couple of days once the, the people finish crossing over. And what will that mean for Armenians, for, for ethnic Armenians who are still there? I mean, anyone who remains now, that then now this 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 just uh, guarantees that you know they will be coming soon under the control of Azerbaijan. You know, uh, soon the Azerbaijani army will, and anyone anyone who stays there, soon the Azerbaijan the, after the Azerbaijani army will enter Stepanakert, um, begin dismantling all the the trappings of statehood. You know, reshaping the city, and that will be fully Azerbaijani control. Right. So does that 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 looks very much like this, that dispute over that region, which has simmered for so many decades, is now done, or is this just another chapter in this particularly long book? I mean, it sure looks like it's done, uh, the, the, the government dissolving, and then, yeah, everybody fleeing. You know, this is uh, ending, you know, the, I think one of, the, one of the most common refrains that I think that you think you hear about conflicts like this that isn't true is that there is no military solution. The, the answer is that 
there, there's, there's always a military solution. It's just very uh, unpalatable, and it involves a lot of human suffering. And that's what we're seeing right now is Baku's military solution to the conflict, which involves uh, the physical destruction of the, the, the state and then the, the, the expulsion of the entire population there. Meanwhile, um, uh, something like 120,000 people are trying to get out. What's the situation at the border like? I mean, they're moving people through quite quickly. In, um, in, they're, 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 they've stopped registering people at the border in Kornizor. They're just um, recording how many people are coming through now. They've stopped forcing them to stop and register. And instead, they're, they're, they're bringing them down to Goris, the nearest major city. And from there, you know, they're quite quickly putting people onto buses going to different cities, different regions of Armenia, all across the country where they have housing available for, for them. Uh, so, this, you know, despite the fact that 65,000 people have come through, the only a fraction of those are, are still in uh, Goris uh, or near the border here. And is Armenia equipped to look after so many people and to absorb so many people into such a small country? I mean, it's tough, especially, you know, there, there's already a rent crisis here with, uh, especially in, in Yerevan, the capital, um, with all the, the, the Russians who have moved here fleeing uh, Russia after the, it launched its war on Ukraine. So there's already a bit of a housing crisis here. And, you know, there, there's still been plenty of families here that are looking, that are staying with friends temporar temporarily, that are staying in hotel rooms that still need to sort out their, their permanent housing. You know, it's a, taking in 120,000 people in, uh, you know, the space of a week is a lot for any country, let alone uh, developing one with a population under 3 million. Good talking to you. Thanks for talking us through that, Neil. Neil Hauer in the Armenian border town of Kornitso. Thank you. Let's get more from uh, Alessia Avartanian from the International Crisis Group, where she's a senior researcher on the South Caucasus region. She joins us from the Armenian capital, Yerevan. Uh, welcome to DW. Uh, what's the border situation like as these tens of thousands of people arrive in Armenia? There are still some thousands that are waiting for their turn uh, to take with road. Uh, to Armenia. Today, early in the morning, uh, we saw some of the video footage of the Azerbaijani police that started entering uh, the settlements, uh, including the main town of Enclave, uh, which is Stepanakert. That should indicate probably that in the coming days we will see some more people coming, but this is effectively the end to the, uh, to the rule of the de facto authorities in this uh, Enclave. Right. Uh, and as people uh, go into uh, Armenia, what is the situation uh, there on the border? Well, Armenian authorities, they're providing some numbers of the people who cross. But, you know, the, uh, the numbers, they are so huge. There are so many people coming. And then I understand that there are some problems with the registration. So the number that we are provided, for example, today in the morning, the authorities said that there are more than 60,000 people who already crossed. There are many more. They just uh, cannot really handle the registration. And to be honest, this is a bad sign if the Armenian government cannot handle even with primitive thing of registration of the displaced people, that indicates that there can be more problems in, in the coming weeks and months and probably even years because these uh, people don't seem to go back anytime soon. Right. So uh, so you're, you're talking about uh, the problems essentially of integration, of finding schools, uh, houses, jobs for so many people. This will be a huge task. You know, people uh, in Karabakh, they're ethnic Armenians, and yes, they're coming to Armenia, but they speak a different language. They are different. They have their own networks. They have their own traditions. With us, it's really very different from Armenia. And as one of the heroes of the story that you just showed, she was telling that she was fleeing the fighting. And then many people, several thousands of people like this, they went uh, to Armenia without any kind of belongings. So they will first of all, have a huge challenge of how to live in the coming weeks when the winter is coming. And in Armenia, winter is usually very cold. Um, but then also to how to start with new life in a new place that is very distinct from the place where they used to live in Nagorno-Karabakh.
And, and, and a word about the sort of the bigger picture. D does the fact that so many ethnic Armenians ha have now uh, left Nagorno-Karabakh mean that Azerbaijan has effectively won, if I can use that phrase, this complicated, a decades-long conflict? Or would you expect some sort of Armenian counter-offensive at some stage in the future? You know, uh, it's definitely not the case that Armenia is going to do anything. Uh, we saw that Armenia refrained from interfering in any kind of military uh, activities last week when the military operation was taking place in Nagorno-Karabakh. But you are right, this conflict has been uh, more than 30 years old. And there were the moments when Armenians were driving ethnic Azerbaijanis from this very conflict zone. And who knows, you know, if there is no effective negotiation process, if there is no um, proper and justified attitude to all those who have been suffering for all these years and decades, then yes, the conflict will stay in place. And although all these people are now in Armenia, believe me, I saw it so many times. I have been working uh, on conflicts for many years. And then you never know. You never know. It's not the end, and I would definitely not use the word of winning the war. You can win the battle, but you can right. still lo lose the conflict. And so what sort of um, future awaits those ethnic Ar Armenians who remain in Nagorno-Karabakh? I understand that there will be very few who will be staying there. So it will be not the issue of mainly about how to protect them, although it will be still very important. And you probably know that the US government, the EU, different member states, including Germany, they have been calling uh, for more international presence on the ground. But the main issue will be still how to uh, face with new reality when we have the people who fled, but they have a problem property on the ground. They consider Nagorno-Karabakh their homeland. There is a vast cultural heritage in Nagorno-Karabakh, and there will be always issues about their protection. So the negotiations that will be taking place, most probably they will have to address on the one hand with immediate challenges of protecting those who, for one reason or another, will stay, potentially for those who may uh, want to go and visit or maybe even go back, which is not really visible. Right anytime soon, I can tell you, after this uh, terrible conflict that we saw, but um, also to address the grievances of those who will continue to consider Nagorno-Karabakh right. their homeland. And, and believe me, just kind of from knowing with the region, I don't think that with the, pre the problem is to disappear anytime soon. Thank you for uh, guiding us uh, so clearly through that. Uh, Alessia Vartanian from the International Crisis uh, Group in Armenia. Thank you.